I've never met a person who was not successful that didn't have a great amount of self-discipline within their life. Self-discipline and being able to perform and being able to keep your life on schedule and being able to keep commitments and promises and meet deadlines is essential to success. The fact of the matter is that the reason discipline is hard to maintain is because it is hard to maintain. That's what makes discipline hard. It's hard. It's real simple. If you don't work out, you don't get a you don't get a muscle, right? I always tell people this is there's a daily practice like priming. If you don't do that, if you get up and you just have no discipline whatsoever, you get no value of anything. Your diets don't work when you don't do them. Exercise doesn't work when you don't do them. But most of the people have some experiences that they want to shift. And once you shift those things, your whole life changes. The thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. Unfortunately, just as human as everyone else. And it is work to maintain the discipline. That's what it is, work. Holding the line, maintaining the standard, giving no slack, none. That's the discipline. That's the discipline, and it is hard. If discipline comes from somewhere else, it's very, very hard to remain consistent because you tend to resist. It's wild because I see trainers and they're in the gym with people and, you know, the guy or girl that they're working out hates their workout, hates it because the discipline is coming from somewhere else. It's something that you dread every time you go in, you don't really want to do it. It's like, uh, but oh no, my trainer's here. He's about to, you know, beat me up and make me feel crazy. Well, the truth is, every trainer should work his way out of your life. Anybody who's working you out, your teachers, your trainers, your people, they have to train you to get out of your life. So you can go ahead, do your own workout, do your own thing, practice self-discipline. And if there's one thing I would say that does make it easier, it's to envision what it feels like when you're done. What it feels like after you've worked out or you've held the line on your food intake or you've pushed through some monotonous project that you have to do and all those things. When they're done, they feel good. Contrary to that, envision what you will feel like later when you let the discipline slack. You know the feeling, feeling weak and defeated and you know that you're falling behind. So get to know those two different types of feelings and ask yourself which one you want to feel in 10 minutes or in a half an hour. You know, we kind of have this idea that while you're free as a child and then you if you have a certain delightful wonderful positive freedom as a child and then that's given up as you approach adulthood but the truth of the matter is is that you have a lot of potential as a child but none of that is capable of manifesting itself as freedom before you become disciplined and discipline is a matter of the imposition of order and the order is necessary especially for people who are hopeless and nihilistic and lots of people are hopeless and nihilistic way more people than you think and part of that is because no one's ever really encouraged them. And so the book is in part a matter of encouragement. It's like, lay yourself, lay a disciplinary structure on yourself, get the chaos in, in, in check, and then you can move towards a state that's freer, because it's discipline first. Like, look, if you're gonna become a concert pianist, there's gonna be several thousand hours of extraordinarily disciplined practice. That's the imposition of order on your potential, let's say. But what comes out of that is a much grander freedom and so in virtually every freedom that you have in life that's true freedom is purchased at the price of discipline. When the thing is done, when the discipline has been implemented, remember what that feels like and then remember that those minutes and those hours, they turn into weeks and months and years and holding the line in those critical minutes will put you in an infinitely better place physically and mentally if you maintain the discipline. So work through the weakness, fight through the temptation, hold the line hold the line, maintain the discipline. It is not easy. 
but it is worth it because because discipline equals freedom it's all mental and people don't get it you know, everybody wants to say okay well here go 10 steps to okay lewis said do eight et said do nine mm -hmm. you know this person says this is the 12 steps and everybody's trying to get the steps without the mentality it's like okay maybe you don't need all nine or maybe you don't need all eight maybe you need four maybe you need 12 i don't know but i think sometimes they see what we do and say if i can if, if like if i can duplicate that just like exactly how he's done in the book exactly how, and it's like yo you have a story you know you you have a unique experience and so your 12 are shaped by by not just your world but how your world has shaped your thinking and i think that's the part they're missing it's like guys you know, if it was easy, everybody could do it. If it was a cookie cutter, everybody would just follow it to the T. But there's a mindset. And when I looked at Serena, you know, when I look at the Michael Jordans Tom of the world, Brady. Tom Brady, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at Michael Phelps, like it is a mentality. You know, on our new album, The Resolution, I talk about I got that dog. And I'm not really referring to just this, you know, aggressiveness, but it is a mindset. I saw Belichick said something where, you know, they were like, how you feeling about the Super Bowl? He's like, I'm going to be honest with you. We're five weeks behind. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, everybody else for is next year. For next year, everybody yeah, yeah. else is practicing, training. They lost, you know. They they and so they're trying to get ready. They're lifting weights. They're reading books. They're you know everybody that lost is studying. He's like, yo, we five. What type of mind says <laughs> we're five weeks behind the in day terms after of the Super Bowl? Right, did they have the Super Bowl? So, but again, it's a mentality, and yes. I think a lot of people are missing that mentality. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit. And then one day something goes wrong. And I mean, that's why s spoiled kids are so sad. Like a spoiled young boy is one of the saddest things ever. A young boy that becomes a man and can't take care of himself. And his dad has to keep on rescuing him. His dad has to keep on bailing him out of situations and giving him money. I've met guys like that. And that is a crippling affliction when they don't have the character themselves to be able to get by in life. They constantly need someone to help them and bail them out. Even as a grown man, I've met guys in their 40s that still need help from their parents i'm like what the f man you're never gonna get it right because somewhere along the line they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get shit done there's sometimes where you have to f pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed and if you don't do that and you just keep calling on your daddy and your daddy keeps rescuing you you never develop those tools you never develop that ability to recognize what you're doing wrong with your life because you're, you're soft, you got a cushiony, you got a safety net, a safety net for your safety net. Make every day your masterpiece. The secret of your success, the secret of my success is determined by what we do daily. And we've missed this all the time. I wrote a book called Today Matters. And the reason I wrote the book Today Matters is because today matters. We over-exaggerate yesterday. We just think we were amazing yesterday. We weren't. Just trust me. Of course, when you're my age, 71, you don't need to worry about it. You forget. The other day I was in a car and Margaret looked at me and said, John, we're forgetting everything. I said, we kind of are. She said, let's do a plan. I said, what's your plan? She said, she said you remember who, you, who we are and I'll remember where we're going. Hey, hey, I want, it's working. It's really working. You got to divide it up a little bit. You got to divide it up. We, we, we over-exaggerate yesterday. Hey, we overestimate tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, tomorrow. I, you know, I'll get to that tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll do that. To, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow. 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 By the way, good intentions are worthless. Worthless, folks. When are you going to fall out of love with good intentions? They're worthless. Good intentions are worthless unless they lead to good actions. Nobody ever had their life changed by somebody hoping, thinking. Good intentions are not enough. But yeah, I'm inspired by, you know, life and all sorts of things. You can say something right now and it would inspire me to write a song or something to happen. You know, most kings just happen to be inspired by a Basquiat drawing, you know, the drawing that he had. The, most young kings get their head cut off on the bottom. And I looked at that and I was like, it's powerful. You know, just the statement in itself, you know, lends itself for a song. The song starts inspired by Basquiat. My chariot's on fire. Everybody took shots at my body up. I'm tired. And then it's just, they build me up to break me down, to build me up again. They're like, hold me with you back so we can kill your ass again. You know, it's like this thing, this love, hate. 
thing that the world has with success, period.